but you guys that don't believe in the woo, you know what, don't knock the woo. If you haven't experienced the woo, then go off doing your scientific method. Because scientific method will keep you looking forever. Scientific method will have you looking at tree lanes that fall from the top of trees in windstorms. And scientific method will have you calling a wood knock where two tops of two trees a quarter mile away from you are smacking each other in the wind because they're way up there and the wind blows a little stronger up top. There's your scientific method. Um, finding shelters built by bears or built by cougars that are erratic. There's your scientific method. Unless you're finding some kind of symmetrical or construction type pattern, it's just a shelter. It's just an animal shelter. And a lot of animals work with their hands. A lot of animals, I, I've watched my little dog make a cave out of a blanket that I use to keep the back door sealed up in the winter. I watched him build a cave and climb into it. So animals are smarter than you think they are and there's your scientific method. Now I'm going to go up and I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about the scientific method about these prints I've found up here in the, in the snow. What happened is, is the snow was about a foot deep here and I went out day after day after day as the snow was melting and then on the day that it was melted I found prints with Dixie. Those prints were in the mud, they were fresh and somebody said those are old prints. Well no they're not because the algae is missing where the prints at and second it's muddy and then that person said no it's dry out there. Those are cracks in the mud. Well, you know what? When it's four or five inches deep of mud, those cracks are available. Those cracks run about eight, nine, ten inches deep into the lake bed because it's a lake bed that dried up. And when the snow was sitting on top of them, there's a lot of prints out there. And when the snow melts, it washes the prints out. So I'm going to show you the difference between a washout print and a fresh print so that those skeptics that are just trolling the channel wanting to create disbelievers of people watching my stuff they can see for themselves um, so some of you guys that create fake channels just to come complain because you don't have the gut or the gall to come with your channel name and visit and make your opinion known I already know some of you who you are. Um, trolls are trolls, man. If, you, if you're jealous of what I'm finding, give a spiritual grab like I've got. I believe that what I saw gave me an edge into thinking different about the Bigfoot. Now, I know they're real. And I took a lot of heat from my, my uncle, who then I took up on Feb the last day of February in 2015. And we watched the big one go up the hill. So now I got a witness and a believer out of a skeptic. And my daughters. I got one sitting here holding the camera. Um, is Bigfoot real, Harmony? Yeah. Uh, why do you think Bigfoot's real? Well, I didn't before, but I do now because I've seen it, like, up close. And so that's, that's what it takes to be a knower, you guys. It takes an experience. And once you have the experience, then you start experimenting, yes. The scientific method doesn't always pan out. The scientific method's gonna, sure, here's the scientific method. I'm gonna go up in the woods and I'm gonna study a tripod that fell. Three tops of a tree broke off in a windstorm and they just happened to couple together and make a tripod. It may not happen all the time, but there's millions and billions of trees on the earth, so it's probably gonna happen somewhere. And that's not scientific method, calling that a Bigfoot structure. It's when you start finding things leaned against each other and when you start finding things placed together, then you know it's a structure being built by an intelligent creature. And I'm telling you, the Bigfoot aren't the only intelligent creature out in the woods at night building things. So, about the woo, you guys, go ahead knock the woo but I say don't knock the woo because it's gonna bite you in the end All right, we've had a day of it's been two days since I've been out here 
crack is still in my track, you guys. Look at that. These cracks are from the lake bed drying up. But look, that's mud. See that? See? It's drying up. But I'm going to show you something else. Here's an example where I stepped down and went across this channel the other day. You can still see the cracks in my tracks there. It's because these cracks, you guys, look how deep they are. They're eight inches deep, six inches deep. So, anyway, we're gonna go up and look at another piece of evidence here. Here's somebody who walked along the lake before the snow melt and their print washed out. I'm gonna show you a couple more of those. Okay. Right, get down there so you can show them. All right, here's another track of mine walking up to the prints I did casting on. If you look close, you can see the mildew around the mud. This mildew is a green mildew that builds after the lake has drained and the dirt starts to crack. I stepped in the mud and I pushed the mud out, but you can see there's no mildew in there. But yes, there's a crack in there. So that does not make my two-day-old print old. It, it proves that yes, you can walk in this mud out here and leave tracks after the snow melts. Now this is one of the prints, this is the bed area where I've cast all the prints. You can see they push the mud out, that there's no mildew down in the mud print. There's mildew up on top here, and you can still freshly see the toe prints, there's no washout. Had the snow melted inside that print, it would have washed out and dulled itself. Now I'm going to show you a comparison print. Okay. Now, here's an example of a washed out print. The crack was still in the foot when it stepped on the bed because the beds had the cracks in them now for a couple months. But you can see after the snow melted it washed the print out. So this is a human print, a boot. Okay. Now you can see that it's still freshly muddy down here in the channel itself. The mud's sticking to my boots. And I'm still leaving prints above the cracks. So Whoever uses that crack method to say that that's an old print doesn't know what they're talking about. All right. Go. These are two prints right here that were before the snow melted. And you can see the washout around the edge of the print and you can see the depression of the snow as it receded. You can see it in both tracks. These tracks were made before the snow. They're not fresh. Track Wait, go. Here's a track that was made before the the snow, this was in the mud before it snowed recently, the second time. It snowed several times this year. We've had three months of this stuff. This is a print that was made that's not fresh. The snow was melted inside of it and washed it out around the edges. So that's an old print. Okay, Prints good. that aren't as fresh. That one over there, this Dad, one. Dad, it didn't get all of it. You gotta restart. Here are some prints that aren't so fresh. This one, this one and the one over there versus tracks that are fresh, our tracks. You can see the difference. So, anyone that wants to say that those little Bigfoot human looking prints weren't fresh, they're not really paying attention to the point here. All right, so here's one, that one hole underground that I wanna film into with the lights on. I'm gonna turn the lights on. I'm gonna reach up in there and see what we can get this time because last time the other camera, I've got the big camera on here, you guys. Goes around the corner there. Does something come up here and burrow it in? Made itself a nice little sleeping hole. I don't know if you see any kinds of little prints or anything. I just had to get that. Look at this. God, look. It's like oh. oh, it was, uh... I don't know, it's big enough for a cap for my... How many is out here collecting sticks? Tell them why. Okay, so I make wands with Dad's Dremel. And so, like, I carve on them. <laughs> I make them have good handles, and I did one with spirals all the way around. And I'll, I'll show you one. 
I'll show you when she makes them for the barter fair and she trades them for really cool stuff. I'm gonna sell them too. There's some scat right outside the shelter. Well, Harmony's probably onto something. What did you say? So I thought scat was only for deer poop or it was like only for bear poop. You might be right. So that might have been feces.